This free program is paid for by the listeners of WBAI New York. If you're not already a member, think about joining us to help keep free speech alive. And it's 714 in the morning. You're listening to Pacifica Radio in Nueva York. I'm Ibrahim Gonzalez, joined by Reggie Johnson. I don't know if I've mentioned that so far, but uh, Reggie is back on the block. Reg, man, so good to have you behind the controls. Uh, well, thank you, know? you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Anyway, you're listening to Pacifica Radio. It's like about 7.40 in the morning. Hey, yeah. let me get some coffee here. I have a very good friend of mine from many years, Mr. Edwin Pagan, joined by J.W. Cortez. They are both working on a film called Conscientious Objector. I want to welcome both of these hermanos to the program. Uh, thanks for having us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Conscientious Objector, just right off the hook, I said, this must be a real content-driven film. Uh, J.W., you wrote the story. You have a background in the military. You served as a gunny. A gunny, it, that's right. Wow, I'm and impressed. In the Marines? In the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, what was your rank? Sergeant? Uh, gunnery Sergeant, for short. They call us, uh, they call us Gunny. It's yeah. a term of endearment. Kind of goes with the <laughs> turf, doesn't it? Absolutely. What inspired this story? I know it's based on some true events, but besides the true events, what was it that motivated you and compelled you to tell this story? It's 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 interesting. Um, we first started off uh, just simply talking about what we could do to to keep ourselves engaged as as artists, Edwin and I, and what turned out to be a two-page uh, mini project turned into a thirty-plus page project. Along the way, I started to I guess delve into the experience that I had in Iraq during the invasion in two thousand three. As the world watched, I was out there with the Marine Corps. And one of the things that happened, um, without getting into too much detail, had always lingered in my mind. And I found myself going back to that place and saying to myself, you know what, write what you know. And from two pages, we exploded into 30-some-odd pages. And, and, and it's basically, that's, that's how it happened. And, and Consciousness' objector is, is inspired by, by that event, you know. Now, the premise of the film is... Uh a gunny sergeant that comes back to the United States after being in Iraq mm -hmm. uh, lives in the Bronx. Um, we don't. We don't. We don't really label where he's where he's from. We, we want to just kind of leave that open for for the audience. Yeah. Should I out you guys as yes. to where you're shooting the film? <laughs> um, sure, sure. Well, we've shot. We have shot some in the Bronx. We actually did some work recently um, in the South Bronx. Uh, near the uh, the Bruckner Boulevard by the Third Avenue Bridge, which doubled actually for Iraq, which was interesting, and um, and JW actually can name some of the other locations because they're out of the city. Um, yeah, well, we've shot Jesus, uh, Staten Island, uh, New Jersey. I've I've borrowed and begged and 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 used everyone's uh, homes, and uh, I've just pretty much asked for help, and it's been it's been a blessing. Everybody's pretty much said yes. Not initially, but eventually. So th then you really, when the tire meets the road, you're shooting a film, you really see the people that are supporting you. You see the people who are supporting you, uh, and then you see the ones who are just a little bit reluctant. You know, the, the, the word film scares a lot of people. How so? Um, well, they, they, they imagine that you're going to take their house and you're going to just tear it up and you're going to have trucks parked outside and you're going to have a bunch of... PAs, you know, uh, rubbing out cigarette butts on their hardwood floors, and and we and Eddie and I, I guess, have have, have come up with this little um, game plan, this, this these little magic uh, rabbits that come out of our hats, and we just try to, you know, pop them out every now and then, and just calm people, say, listen, this is this is a dream for a kid from Brooklyn, from Sunset Park, uh, who just wants to put together something to show my people, our people. It can be done, and if you help me, I'll, I promise I'll come back and I'll give you that. J.W. Cortez, what on a personal tip was the message that you really wanted to convey? What was your, um, what what was it about your experience that you took away with that is filtering through in this story in the film? The the war. Um, 
And, and that's such a, a, a term that I, I'm not really comfortable with. You know, people call it different things, the occupation, the liberation, whatever you want to call it. But um, it has inspired me uh, in every single day that I've made it back home alive, you know, since that day in 2003. Um, the message that I really wanted to convey in this film is that that impact of war um, can filter and will filter, filter on to every member of your family um, in one regard or the other, you know, and it's happened in my family. And at first, you come home from these from these, these experiences, and you're not really sure what to do with them at first. And and you can do several things, we know. But one of the things that I found myself is that I, as I was trying to filter my experiences, it was also affecting my wife. It was affecting my children, um, and not in a negative way, but just it was just simply affecting them. So I, do, I wanted to show that in this film how that experience can affect everyone that's involved in that nucleus of of what we call a marine. In studio with J.W. Cortez, actor, writer, director, and also filmmaker, cinematographer, photographer, bon vivant, Edwin Pagan. <laughs> Eddie, what was it that you signed on to this project to do? I, what attracted you to it? Well, I mean, we had discussions. I mean, like J.W. said, we, uh, the piece started out originally probably as a two-page piece. It was originally going to be just a little segment for his reel, but once we started talking about the the scope of the piece, we thought we immediately knew that it was much larger than than two pages. Um, you know, creating short films is an art in itself, and we just knew that this would be bursting at the seams with the with the with what we could include and what we what we would have to omit. So we quickly, you know, I quickly said, well, let's yeah, let's definitely do something a little broader. And the more we talked about it, the more we saw that it it not only was it relevant to things that are happening today. But also th things that have happened before and will happen again, unfortunately. And what what we thought was that it, it, it was right material for us to be creative on many levels. So JW got to work right away in expanding the story, and we would talk about it every now and then, and he would send me more pages. And right away, since you know I've worked many years as a cinematographer, I, I could just you know see how rich it would be in terms of of the of the image as a visual medium um and the story itself in many levels although it has scripted word there's dialogue it is also very cinematic in the way that we've been shooting it and as he said we've been fortunate because we've been given access to a great many good locations we've shot in prisons and courts we've shot out in, in locations where you have to do a double take and say where exactly is that you know because we've tried to also make it that it could be in anywhere America. So in some settings it looks like it could be an urban landscape, in other it looks a little bit more rustic, you know, and in and in many respects and, and, and on all accounts very beautiful. And and you know, and we took it from there. And I think that um it's gonna be a film that's gonna be uh taken and, and digest on many levels because uh you know you, it's a piece that you have to kind of look at it and say, wow, you know, this this is actually what happens while we're back home, uh, you know, going to the movies, uh, making love to our partners, et cetera, while people are, are, are doing this on a daily basis. But not only that, but as the backbone and theme of the film is, is sometimes the people that are out there trying to maintain the peace for us, um, and there's debate about that as well, whether that's the true intention, at least on on the on the government level, I think our troops do a good job of doing what they're out there to do, you know. Uh, but also, what is exactly that these people go through? And I think, as what happens to uh, J.W. and his character, he's caught between a rock and a hard place because he didn't commit the atrocity, but he's also uh, loyal to the troop that was killed in action in committing the crime. And, uh, you know, so he's torn between what could happen to himself, the consequences that are going to come on him for actually being loyal to one of his fellow Marines who was also killed immediately after he committed the murder. So, and, and, and most of the film is about that, you know, whether you're loyal to the people that you're doing things for or yourself. Well, these are the kind of conflicts that a lot of veterans f have faced for the longest time, everything from, uh, I guess, there are probably still veterans alive from the First World War on through World War II, the Korean conflict, Vietnam, and now the war in the Middle East. 
Uh, just curious about the medium. Are you shooting on 16 millimeter or are you shooting on um, uh, digital video? No, we're actually shooting digital. We're shooting with uh, P2, with the Panasonic HVX 200, and which is a really good camera. If you light for it really well, it really holds up really nicely. Um, and it's also the way we're shooting because a lot of it is being done... Uh, you know, we only have limited access to locations. Shooting digital allows us also to turn it around very quickly, as long as we're prepared on set uh, in a stage kind of way to actually, you know, kind of download the medium, the digital medium. Um, it allows us to continue to keep shooting without, uh, you know, losing what, the acquiring the, the material that we need to capture. How soon are you uh, wrapping up the film, and then when can people expect for it to take screen? That's a question I would love to answer. Um, well, we're, we're currently waiting for our, our lead actress, Giselle Rodriguez, who's out in L.A. right now working on some stuff. She'll be back by the end of this month. And uh, once she's in town, we're going to wrap up two more days of, of, of shooting. And then we go into the magical land of post. You know, we're, we're very, I'm excited. I'm nervous, but excited. <laughs> what do you hope to be uh, showing the film? I, I tell you, um, I would love to premiere in my hometown, New York City, um, via the you know the film festivals. Uh, I think I've made myself a little nice nest at the New York International Latino Film Festival with Calixto and 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 those wonderful people over there. So it'd be it'd be a dream come true to be honest with you. So I know that the film has internet presence. I've seen uh, numerous uh, postings on Facebook, uh, among other places. Uh, how can people keep uh, abreast of the development of the film. Well, I mean, we 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 do have a Facebook uh, Facebook uh, page, and uh, all you have to do is really go on Facebook and and kind of search for conscientious conscientious objector the movie because there's a couple of other pages for conscientious objector which is a different thing, um, and they'll find it and you know basically they can uh, get on and we also have a Facebook page I mean a a, a website okay. called conscientious objector movie and uh, the movie actually yeah www.co-themovie.com okay. very good great hey guys thanks for coming on and um, I'm so going to expect another visit once you guys wrapped it up and we can oh, absolutely. talk about it in more length and let people know when, the, when and where the screening will take place J.W. Cortez Edwin Pagan thanks for coming on board thanks for having us thank you